Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have this week's episode of Dear Nero which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions and I do my best to go ahead and answer it. The gameplay we're looking at today is going to be FIFA 14 World Cups. So this game was sent to me by EA to check out and I liked it. You know, I played a bit of FIFA back in the day, not a whole lot. I'm going to be honest, it wasn't a whole lot of FIFA back in the day. It was more or less, you know, we'd have people over at my house and then we would, you know, face each other at FIFA, kind of like a little mini tournament. And so I started up this game. They recommended a difficulty for me, which was beginner. And I don't know how they recommend that. Maybe they look at the games you've played associated with your gamer tag. And they look at that and they're like, oh, you've only played one other FIFA game ever. So maybe we should give you beginner difficulty. And I'm like, okay, I'll try that out. Because it's been a while since I played a FIFA game. And I ended up playing my first match. It was United States versus England. And it was funny. It's kind of an outlandish score. There's lots of like trick shooting and stuff going in there. I picked up the game relatively quickly. But then again, I'm playing on beginner mode. And I started playing on higher difficulties. But then it became not so much easy. But uh, it was definitely fun. I hope you guys all enjoyed the gameplay. Uh, the World Cup actually starts tomorrow. For those of you guys that are watching this on the 11th. The World Cup starts tomorrow. It's going to run throughout the month. There's going to be a tournament of 32 teams. And they're all going to be competing for the World Cup. It's going to be kind of a cool thing. It's something a lot of people are into. I've never been super into, into football or soccer, whatever you want to call it. But I definitely love sports games. And I think one of the things I like about the hockey games and the FIFA games is that it's a lower scoring game. Baseball as well, right? As baseball football, soccer, or hockey are all kind of lower scoring games. So when you do score, it's kind of like this big deal. It feels really good when you do get that score. And as compared to something like basketball or American football or anything like that, where scoring just kind of happens all the time. Whereas like in basketball, it's not, you know, it's not very uncommon for a score to go up in the hundreds in that game for each team. Whereas for something like that to happen in like baseball, that just won't happen. But now let's get into the questions here. It is time for this week's episode of Dear Nero. And we're going to hop in this with the first question. He's going to write, Dear Nero, which E3 game do you like the best graphics-wise? I think Call of Duty has amazing graphics this year. And NHL 15 also has stunning graphics. Thank you. And as always, have a wonderful day. Jacob from the Great White North. So, Jacob, I agree. Advanced Warfare definitely had some great graphics. NHL 15, of course, looked good. Um... Tom Clancy's The Division also looked good. Uh, Witcher, Witcher 3 definitely looked really good, right? But here's the thing, here's the thing. Every game looks good. Did you guys notice that about this year's E3? Is that so many different games were looking good this year. And I think that is in part due to the fact that a lot of people are making their games and they're showing their games on next-gen consoles. They're putting them on the Xbox One, they're putting them on the PS4. It's something that's kind of died off. You know, a lot of people were talking about this in the months going up to it and a little bit going after the release of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, how next-gen consoles are really going to be able to change gaming. And it act it's actually true. People forget about that, but it really is true. Now when games are being developed, it's going to take a few years before the 360 and the PS3 kind of just become obsolete and people just don't even develop for them anymore. But what they're going to be able to do is they're going to be able to make their games with the hardware on the PS4 and on the Xbox One, and they're not going to be held back by the old, old technology of the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 anymore. Therefore, games are going to have more features, games are going to have better graphics, games are going to have more stuff going on in them, and that's going to be an awesome thing. And graphics is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what we can expect with games coming out in the future. Now, once again, not everybody is exactly ready for a console transition. Not everyone's ready to go from a 360 to an Xbox One or a PS3 to a PS4, but it's going to happen within the next few years. You know, it's not going to be, you know, we're going to constantly keep those things around. They're very old, guys. So within two, maybe three years tops, you know, those consoles are going to kind of become obsolete to the point where the PlayStation 2 was, you know, and the Xbox original Xbox was back when the 360 and PS3 route. Eventually, those things are dinosaurs, they're not developed for anymore, and gaming can move on. You know, and that's what's going to end up happening here. I think it's definitely awesome. I cannot wait for a generation of games where everything is just way better graphic-wise. There's games have more detail, games have, you know, more features and functionality within them because they actually are not limited by old-gen consoles. So I'm definitely excited for that. But of course, it's going to be a few years down the road. Not everyone is exactly ready to put up $400, $500 for a brand new console and plus, you know, all the games that come with that and things like that. So of course, it's going to be a little bit, but it's coming. It's going to be freaking awesome. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, 
I'm sure you're getting tons of questions about Advanced Warfare, but I'm thinking that Advanced Warfare will be too much like Titanfall. I believe it is ridiculous that Sledgehammer want to incorporate chet packs into Call of Duty. I'm just hoping that this will stay to the campaign. Otherwise, Advanced Warfare will lose the Call of Duty feel. Keep up the awesome work, Marco from New Zealand. So Marco, I would agree that if you were to add jetpacks to Call of Duty similar to what they did with Halo Reach where you had people always flying around in jetpacks and doing things like that, it would definitely not feel like Call of Duty anymore. I'm really hoping with Advanced Warfare that they have all this crazy stuff, right? But it's somehow either balanced within the multiplayer to, to continue to feel like Call of Duty or it's all just campaign based. You know, it, it's probably going to be all campaign based. If you look at some of the stuff that we saw going into Black Ops 2, I keep using Black Ops 2 as an example because Black Ops 2 was the last like super futuristic Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty Ghost isn't really so futuristic, right? There's not too many outlandish style things within that game. So I keep going back to Black Ops 2 mentioning that. Do you remember the flying squirrel suits that we saw? And everyone's like, wait a minute, are the flying squirrel suits going to be in the multiplayer? Are we going to be able to fly around? It's like, no, you're not going to be able to do that. It's not going to make any sense. There's a lot of things that happen within the Black Ops 2 campaign that have no relevance to multiplayer whatsoever. It's, it's like they don't even exist if you're playing multiplayer. If you never played the campaign, you wouldn't even know half that stuff exists in Black Ops 2. And I'm assuming the same is going to be the, for Advanced Warfare. You know, There's going to be things that are just crazy and outlandish because they're, they're trying to set this feel where it's 40 years in the future. And there's all kinds of crazy technology and we're fighting this crazy war. And they're going to do that. They're going to set that feel. But I have a feeling that a lot of that stuff's not going to make it in the multiplayer because it just wouldn't make sense. But on the same side, on the same note though, there are going to be different kind of quote-unquote titan suits that they're calling exoskeletons. There's also going to be titan weapons in which they're talking about like plasma weapons and stuff like that. So... Who knows? I mean, no one's going to pre-order Advanced Warfare so that their exoskeleton in the campaign has a gold finish to it. They're going to do it because of the multiplayer, right? So somehow exoskeletons and plasma weapons and things like that are making it into the Advanced Warfare multiplayer, which who knows how that's going to work. I guess we're going to have to wait until the multiplayer reveal, which is probably going to be two months from now to be honest i think most of the stuff that comes out for the multiplayer comes out in august like early august so we've got the rest of this month and then next month and then august so they're just gonna leave us dangling in the wind with more questions and answers next question he writes dear nero you said you're going to go to level 100 on battlefield 4 and you also said that you have battlefield premium my question is will you be going back or will you be waiting for the dragon's teeth dlc since you'll be getting it for free with premium William from the USA. Well, William, I would say that's probably the best course of action. So I've been kind of out of the loop with the Battlefield series for a while. I played uh, the China Rising DLC and the Second Assault DLC, which I thought Second Assault was pretty cool because it brought back a bunch of maps from Battlefield 3 that we all know and love. And uh, I missed out completely on the Naval Strike DLC. I haven't tried that out yet at all. And then the Dragon's Teeth DLC is going to be coming out sometime this summer, as well as the Final Stand DLC, which I'm assuming is going to be more towards the end of the summer or so. So, we're going to have the Naval Strike DLC and the Dragon's Teeth DLC. I, I figure out if I wait for the Dragon's Teeth DLC to come out, I'll go back to Battlefield 4 and I'll have that new DLC to play on, as well as the Naval Strike DLC to play on. And I'll be able to check all that stuff out. So yeah, I, I think I'll definitely do that. Wait for the DLCs to come out, go back and play. And when you're playing on all new maps and you're using all new kinds of weapons and stuff, you're not even going to think about the fact that you're really high level and it's taking forever to level up. So it'll end up working out perfectly. So that, that just works out well. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what do you think the gaming industry community would be like if Sony and Microsoft combined to make one console? Because I get mad sometimes when one console gets exclusive over the other. P.S. Congratulations and on almost hitting 200,000 subscribers. Marshall from Texas. So Marshall, I've actually gotten that question multiple times. I think I might have answered it maybe once or so ago. But yeah, I get it pretty frequently. Like once every other week, twice every couple weeks or so. And the, here's my answer to what would happen if Microsoft and Sony were combined to make one super console. It would be awful. It would be awful because it, at that point, they would have a monopoly on the console gaming market. Now, you can say there's the Wii and the Wii... Psh, Come on, guys. It's the Wii. It's not exactly on par with Sony and Microsoft, right? There is the Wii. They have their games. They have their exclusive. They have their fan base. But in terms of overall people playing in, like, the hardcore gaming community, Wii is not where you go, all right? We don't go to play Mario Kart, all right? We're talking about other stuff here, all right? That might offend some people, but it's true. The Wii is not exactly on par with the Xbox or the PlayStation. Now, if Xbox and PlayStation were to combine, right, and make one super console, at that point, 
their monopoly within the console gaming market. At that point, there is no more competition in the console gaming market. Therefore, the consoles themselves will never improve and we're going to get a worse experience for it. If you think of what Microsoft has done with the Xbox One, originally, always online, and all this, what, what were all, I only remember all the things that people used to complain about the Xbox One. It had to, it had to be always online, had to have an internet check every 24 hours. I forget all the things that people complained about, but they end up changing everything that people didn't like about the Xbox One because of community feedback and the fact that PlayStation was say, was making an entire marketing campaign, basically making fun of the new policies that Microsoft was going going to implement with the Xbox One. So basically, Sony kind of forced Microsoft's hand to change their platform. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done anything. And just now, the Kinect, everyone's upset about the entire idea of the Kinect. It had to be bundled with your Xbox One, right? People are definitely upset about that. Well, guess what? Because of what PlayStation did and what the community has done in terms of just complaining and complaining and picketing, I'm not, I guess picketing wouldn't be the phrase, but just constantly complaining, saying we don't like this, we don't like this, we hate this, and then of course, the fact that the Sony's PlayStation is already $100 cheaper, that kind of forced Microsoft's hand to make a $400 version of the Xbox One that doesn't include the Kinect that everyone wanted them to do in the first place. And so without that competition, that kind of stuff wouldn't happen. And if those two were to combine and make one console, there would be no competition and they could just force whatever policies and whatever hardware they want upon us and that would be a bad thing. Competition is a good thing. Of course, there's going to be some exclusives that you're gonna get. There's exclusives for the Xbox and the PlayStation as well as different things like, um, uh, you think of the Battlefield Hardline beta is only on the PlayStation, and you think, well, and the PC, or if you think the Call of Duty DLC comes out first on the Xbox as compared to you know, the people at Sony or people on the PlayStation, people on the PC don't get that. So there's exclusives, there's also exclusive games, things like that, but that's a small price to pay. I think that's honestly a small price to pay because when I look at some of the exclusives for PlayStation because I'm an Xbox player, I don't really go, oh boy, I need a PlayStation for those exclusives. I I don't really care. It's one or two games, three or four. It's not. It's not. It's not like a giant majority of games I'm missing out. I'm missing out on a few. Like I would have liked to have played Last of Us, but I couldn't. I was like, all right, whatever. I can't play it. You know. But on the same side, I can play Gears of War, and I've been playing Gears of War, and I can do the Halo stuff. There's exclusives for each one. Doesn't bother me. I think it's a small price to pay for a competitive market. This next question actually kind of goes into the last question. He writes, Dear Nero, After watching the press conferences of E3, I decided by the end of the year I'm going to be buying myself a PlayStation 4. My question is, after seeing the Sony conference, did you ever cross your mind to buy a PlayStation 4 for the new games announced? I would certainly like to buy both consoles if I had the money. Also, are you buying any of the new Xbox announced games? Big fan, Rodrigo from Peru. Well, Mr. Rodrigo, it kind of just went into what I just said with the last question. I I'm not going to buy a $400 machine to play two or three games that I'm be interested in. Of course, there's way more exclusives and way more specific stuff coming to the PlayStation, but it's not that much. I'm not interested in every single one of them that's coming out. I might be interested in a few of them, right? A few of them. And so I'm not going to buy a $400 console to play a few games. I think that is really silly that people do that. It doesn't make sense to me. It's like, oh, dude, 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 we got to go buy the new Wii U because they got the Mario Kart. It's like, why? You're buying an entire console because you want to play one game that, let's face it, you're going to get sick of in probably a month. And that's not, that's not like a dig at Mario Kart. That's a dig at video games in general. How many video games really have the staying power that you want to play them all day, every day. You know, if there's a few games out there, they're called Battlefield and Call of Duty. That's the reason you're on this channel in the first place, is because of Battlefield and or Call of Duty, right? So, you see what I'm saying here? There's not a whole lot of games out there. Like, you look at all the big the big titles that have come out. Like, you look at um, Watch Dogs, which came out not too long ago. Everyone's like, oh my god, Watch Dogs is the coolest game ever. How many people are talking about Watch Dogs anymore? They all played it. They all beat it. It took them a week. They're done with it. And that's what ends up happening with so many different games. So, to buy a console for one game or two games or even five games is crazy to me because consoles for me... And especially if you look at what happened with the 360 and the PlayStation, they're going to be around probably seven years or so, you know? So you bought that console that's going to be around for like seven years, and you did it for like five games. You're like, oh boy, these games right here, these are games are going to be worth me buying this $500 console. And it just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't make any sense to me. You kind of pick the console you want uh, in terms of... For, uh, I said it way back when. I bought an Xbox because I'm a 360 player. I play on the 360, I'm going to get an Xbox One. I like my gamer score, I like my achievements, I like my gamer tag, I like my friends list, I like the interface. 
I like the controller. I like everything about my 360. And so I'm going to get the new Xbox. And the same thing went for PlayStation people. They like their uh, PlayStation ID or whatever it's called. I'm sorry if I don't know the name of it. I think it's called PlayStation ID. They like their trophies that they have on the on their PlayStation network. They like the games they have. They like their controller. They like their friends list. They like their interface. They're all used to it. So they go and buy the PlayStation 4. That's kind of how it works. And I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with owning, a th owning an Xbox One and Xbox 360 and not buying a PlayStation. I'm okay with that. And a few games are definitely not going to change my mind, especially when it's that big of a price point. There's people out there that want an Xbox One or want a PlayStation 4, but they're not going to buy them because they're too expensive right now. They're like, Dude, I, can't I can't afford $500 for a console right now, or I can't afford $400 for a console right now. There's people out there in that position. You know? So I'm not going to blow the money on something that I don't want. And I guess I, 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 guess I would recommend that to everybody. Why buy a console for five games at most? It doesn't it just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't make sense. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you ever get bored of playing Call of Duty? Willie from Oregon. Willie, definitely. I think everybody does, right? It's not just a dig of Call of Duty. It's just like, you, don't, you can't just play one game. I think there was a point in my life where I could play Call of Duty all day, every day, and you only want to play Call of Duty. But I play a lot of games. I play a ton of games. You go around Nier's Let's Plays. We're uh, continuing our playthrough of Game Dev Tycoon. You know, uh, Sniper Elite V2 was actually just um, was actually free on Steam not too long ago, and I'm gonna be playing that because I had played the Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army. That was a lot of fun, and that uh, that add-on Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army is kind of based upon Sniper Elite V2, which is basically a sniper third-person awesome game. That's set in World War II, so I'm looking forward to playing through that. Uh, I've been playing, of course, tons of Borderlands 2 and the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm still playing that daily because that game is just ridiculously addicting. Of course, we're playing some FIFA right here. I love sports games. Uh, sports games are amazing. I cannot wait for the new Madden. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait for the new Madden. That is... I don't know why I do it, but I just love Madden. <laughs> I can't wait for the new Madden. Uh, new NHL is probably be pretty cool. I'm probably going to be playing around with that. I like lots of games, and it's gotten to the point now where... You know, Call of Duty, is it's really fun. I play lots of Call of Duty still. But it's not, like, the only game I play. You know, it, I can understand if it's the only game you play because I've been there. But after you played Call of Duty since 2007, like I have, it's like, all right, this has been fun for a bit, so now I'm going to go play this now. Because if you were to only play one game every day for 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, eight years? Is that right? Really? Seven or eight years? Yeah, that's nuts. They only play one game every single day for that many times. It's like, okay, time for a new experience. Let's let's take a break from this. And so I think everybody, especially if you're on YouTube, because you know you play the game a ton, you probably play it way more uh, than people uh, that are watching you play. Because of course you gotta do the videos and you gotta do all that kind of stuff. Then you're editing the videos and you're making the videos and you're posting the videos and you're talking about the videos. It's like Call of Duty just kind of like revolves around your entire life. So definitely, man, it's definitely fun to play other games outside of Call of Duty. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, I was wondering when Fallout 4 comes, which it won't be for a while, but if you're planning on getting it, and if so, will you play it on Nero's Let's Plays and go through the game that way? Thank you, thank you and keep up the great work. Brad from Canada. So yeah, Brad, I, I tried Fallout New Vegas, and I really couldn't get into it. I think the biggest thing about that game that I couldn't get into was the fact that you had to walk everywhere. Right? There was a fast travel system, I understand that, but if you're going to a place you've never been before, you had to walk. And something as so simple as a sprint feature <laughs> would have been greatly appreciated in that game. It really would have been greatly appreciated. I lost interest because it's like, okay, you gotta go here. That you've never been here before. I'm like, Jesus, you know how far that is? And I'm just sitting here walking through the desert. <laughs> it just, I don't know. Uh, that was the thing I didn't like most about Fallout New Vegas. So Fallout 4, I would assume, I hope anyway, would have a sprinting feature. Like, you know, every other game for the past 30 years has had. So, I think that would be pretty nice if they were to do that. And I'll definitely check it out because, of course, Fallout 4 is going to be a super hyped game. And the reason games are hyped is because there's probably going to be some good things to them. And so, I'll when Fallout 4 does finally come out and get announced and everything, I think I'll play it. Just to see what all the hubbub about Fallout is. Maybe it'll make me want to play the Fallout series. And maybe it'll finally give me the motivation to go back to Fallout 3 in New Vegas and walk through deserts and stuff. So, I'll try it. I'll see. Uh, no expectations, though. It could be great. could just be, you know, another New Vegas for me. Which is, it wasn't very enjoyable. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, what is your favorite and least favorite DLC camo in Ghosts? Henry from New York. 
So Henry, I would say my favorite DLC camo so far in Call of Duty Ghosts, because one can assume there's going to be a lot more. I would say my favorite one would actually be the fitness camo, because I think fitness is just funny. It actually looks amazing on just about every single gun. And the camo I like the least is probably the one camo I haven't bought, which is the weed camo, because it's weed and it's drug culture and it's just... It's stupid. I, I, I will never, honestly, like, forget that Infinity Ward at one point sold out to the point where they're trying to sell marijuana camos. That is <sighs> pitiful, to say the least. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you think Advanced Warfare is going to beat and bring people back from Battlefield and Titanfall? And this person did not leave his or her name. So, the person that did not leave his or her name... I ask you, do you think people choose one game over the other rather than play most of them? Because if you think of like what Call of Duty has, and Call of Duty of course is a very popular game, and it's if if they're if I had to like rank the games I play, like stack rank them, I play more Call of Duty than I play any other game. Right? But does that mean I don't play other games? Just because I play a lot of Call of Duty doesn't mean I can't play Battlefield. Just because I were to play a bunch of Battlefield doesn't mean I can't play Call of Duty. Just because I like Titanfall doesn't mean I can't play Battlefield. And, you know, you can just interchange the three of them all together. I don't think there's actually, and there could be some, but I don't think there's actually a giant group of people out there. They're like, I am only a Titanfall player. Screw Call of Duty. Screw Battlefield. Or there's people out there that are like, I'm only a Battlefield player. I will never play Call of Duty or Titanfall because that's stupid. Or I don't think there's, you know, the same thing, I don't think there's a ton of Call of Duty players who are like, nope, nope. Battlefield and Titanfall, pfft, stupid, I only play Call of Duty. I don't think that's the case. So I don't think that Advanced Warfare is going to bring back people from Battlefield or Titanfall because I think at this point, gaming has evolved to everyone likes to play a lot of different games, not necessarily just one exclusive title. Now, of course, they can play more of one game. Like, like I said, Call of Duty might be the main game for a lot of people, but I feel so a lot of people still play Battlefield and a lot of people still play Titanfall. I think that's kind of how it works. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I want to know what kind of graphics card you use for your PC. Thank you and have a wonderful day. John from California. So John, I have a GeForce GTX 660. That is a graphics card I use and I got it like a year and a half ago. Somewhere in there. You know, I like it. It runs just about every game I want to play on the highest possible settings. So I like it. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, is SV2K and your cousin? You have mentioned both of them are named Nick. Mitch from Nebraska. So SV2K is not my cousin. I have a cousin named Nick, which you guys seen in the Mose Nagant video. And then Toucan, who is also named Nick, is just somebody that, he's like an online friend, I guess. I'm sure you guys have that, where it's just somebody you've been playing with for many, many years. I met Toucan uh, back in 2008 in World of War, and we've been playing ever since. And even to this day, we're still playing uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, we've been playing... Uh, for years now. So, Toucan and my cousin Nick are both named Nick, but they're two different people. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what headset do you use? Thank you and have a wonderful day. Jamie from Ireland. So, Jamie, if you're talking about the Xbox, let me look right here because I don't know the exact name. Turtle Beach X12s, Mr. Jamie, Turtle Beach X12s. And if you're talking about my PC, I use the Audio Technica ATHM50s. I'm actually had to look at both headsets because I don't remember the exact names of them. But yeah, the Audio, Te Audio Technica headset for the PC is actually really nice. I like that headset a lot. And then uh, for console gaming, I, I just use Turtle Beach X12 because I don't need to spend $400 on a headset to hear somebody slightly better. Yeah, you know, I just want to be able to have the game in my head because one, it's just more fun. It's more immersive to have a gaming headset. And two, uh, it's more of a courtesy thing. You know, you don't want to be sitting there blaring your TV at, you know, four in the morning. You know, it's like, I'm playing Call of Duty! <laughs> With, like, the freaking guns going off and stuff. It's like, I started using a headset more as a courtesy thing, and now it's just like, I just always want to wear a headset. I don't, like, I don't use speakers for anything anymore. I don't use them on my PC. I don't use them on my consoles. I'm just not much of a speaker person anymore. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I was wondering if all the Call of Duty DLCs that have brought maps back is what maps do you wish they wouldn't have brought back? Zyme React from Texas. So, there's been a couple maps they brought back or reimagined in the Call of Duty that don't make a whole lot of sense to me. So, I remember specifically during Black Ops 3, like, we're bringing back the fan favorite from World of War Courtyard. It's like, 
Who the hell's favorite map was Courtyard? Courtyard was okay in World of War. Don't don't get me wrong on that. But who's who was like, man, Courtyard is the greatest map ever? Over the map Dome, over the map Silo, over the map Outskirts, over the map Macon, over the map Macon Day, over the map uh, Cliffside, which of course that was brought back into Black Ops and that turned out pretty well, I think. that it, Some people didn't like the map Hazard, but I liked it because of course exactly the same as uh, Cliffside. There was tons of great maps in World of War, but then you then you see in the trailer, old Vonderhaar, we're going to bring back a fan favorite. Courtyard. <laughs> that just, it just doesn't make any sense to me how that works. That's like in the next Treyarch game, them being like, we're going to decide we're going to bring back another fan favorite. Aftermath. <laughs> it's like, it's Nobody likes that map. And Courtyard, uh, Courtyard the Aftermath is kind of a bad comparison because people actually like Courtyard and nobody likes Aftermath from Black Ops 2. But it just doesn't make sense that they brought that back. They brought back his dig and I would have liked to bring back Dome or Silo or Macon or Outskirts or just any other map just about because there's no maps in that game I didn't like. But uh, Courtyard, I think, would be on towards the bottom, to be honest, because it just wasn't as good as the other one. So they brought that, that back, which didn't make any sense. And speaking of DLC maps that didn't make any sense, how about during Modern Warfare 2 when they started bringing back Call of Duty 4 maps? They brought back Strike and they brought back Overgrown. Who in the hell wanted Strike and Overgrown back? Everyone wanted Shipment and Crash, which they definitely brought back Crash. But that was a good thing on their part. They wanted Backlot. Why, why didn't they bring back Backlot? Why, why was Backlot not there? And then again, this is all subjective. And it's still though, it's like it feels like there's more people that played Call of Duty 4 that like the maps Backlot and Shipment than people like the maps Strike and Overgrown. I think that was the thing. But here's another fun fact: I'm fairly positive that the maps that they brought into Modern Warfare 2 from Call of Duty 4, which were Strike, Overgrown, Crash, and Vacant. Yes. Yeah. Also, who won Vacant? Why is that in there? Um. I think all four of those maps were all actually MLG maps in terms of, like, they were actually used. Like, you think of the maps that are used in MLG tournaments for Call of Duty Ghosts or Black Ops 2. Those were, like, the maps from Call of Duty 4. I believe those were the maps. I'd have to look it up. I'm fairly positive those four maps were actually uh, four of the maps that were used in, like, competitive tournaments and stuff like that. So maybe that's the reason they brought them all back. Uh, really don't know, but still, why not shipment? I mean, we, we don't want MLG maps. We want good maps. We want fun maps, not... Boring MLG maps, and I don't understand what goes into an MLG map. Like, why why strike of all maps? Why would that be considered more competitive than the rest of them? I, I don't understand how a third-party company like MLG can just come into Call of Duty and say, like, Alright, let's change up your game. I just don't like how that happens. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, have you heard of the card game Magic Gathering? If so, would you consider playing it? Jake from Georgia. So Jake, I've heard of Magic Gathering. I played it during like elementary school a little bit. Probably not by the rules because I'm sure a lot of you guys did this too. Back in the day, we would play Pokemon cards and we had Magic cards and we had Yu-Gi-Oh cards and uh, I don't think we ever actually looked up the rules for really any of them. I, I think we had like a loose understanding of how the rules of like how each game was played. We kind of just made up our own rules as we kind of went and we would play that way. So I played a bit of Magic back in the day like in elementary school. Maybe... Yeah, I think like 5th grade was probably the latest I'd played Magic the Gathering. I was going to say early middle school, but no. I think 5th grade was the last time I played like a card game like in person with people. Like Yu-Gi-Oh! Or, you know, we'd play all at recess, right? Um, Magic the Gathering, it's still going on. I think there's even an entire online version of Magic the Gathering, so you could play that. But here's the thing, man. I, I don't know how to play the game, and there's a lot to learn. Because there's been people that have been playing Magic the Gathering for how many years? So if I if I ever like my go-to card game, like the, if I ever wanted to play a card game, especially online, I'm just gonna play Hearthstone because the game didn't come out. It came out not too long ago. You know, there are people that are ridiculously good at it, but there ha there isn't people that have been playing Hearthstone for 10 years. It hasn't existed for 10 years. So I kind of like where I'm at with that, where I kind of got in relatively early with Hearthstone, and I understand how a lot of different cards work. I understand how a lot of different players work, how different decks are built, and. You know, I like that. So my card game is Hearthstone, but that's cool if you like Magic the Gathering because a lot of people like that game and have been playing it forever. So good on you. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what software and hardware do you use to produce these wonderful videos that we see? For example, what do you use to edit, capture your card, thumbnails, and etc. Congratulations on 25 million views. 
Joe from New Zealand. So thank you, Joe, first and foremost. The stuff I use to make my videos. So editing, I use Sony Vegas 12. It's an editing software. And if you're wondering, I record. I don't record my voice in Sony Vegas. I use a free program called Audacity. If you guys want to try that out, I use that to record my voice. Uh, my capture card is the Aver Media Live Gamer HD. I make my thumbnails, if you're wondering about that, in Sony Vegas 12 because I don't want to have to learn how to do Photoshop. So I make them all in Sony Vegas, which takes longer, but it's easier, I think. And what else do I got? My microphone's a Rode Podcaster. You guys might be wondering about that. Um, I guess that's really all that goes into the actual video making process. So yeah, that's all my stuff. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, I've been subscribed since your Mose and the Gaunt video, and I was wondering if there was one gun that you could bring into Call of Duty, what would it be? And if you could revive any Call of Duty and make it new, which Call of Duty would that be? From Kyle. Alright, so usually it's like Kyle and something. Just Kyle. Just Kyle. We're just talking to just Kyle today. So just Kyle, um, if I could bring back any gun into Call of Duty, like bring it in. I would like to bring in like the World of War Thompson. I really like the World of War Thompson a whole lot. That's it's a really fun gun. I, the M16 is definitely up there. The M16 is a great gun. I love the M16 as well. But there's like there's already so many good rifles in every Call of Duty game, right? And so I want like a badass Thompson with a round drum. That would be great. And if I could revive any Call of Duty, I think the gut reaction for me would be World at War, right? Because I love that game. But I don't think everyone as a whole would like it. Because there's so many people that just want to be like, Wait, what? I don't have my fully automatic laser rifles anymore? I have to use these semi-automatic ones? So, I don't think a lot of people would like it. I really don't think a lot of people would like World of War, even though I love it. And that would be my first reaction. But if I had to, like, honestly pick, and if I was, like, working at Activision, I'm making the marketing decision right now. We are reviving a Call of Duty game. We're making an HD remastered version of one of the older Call of Duty games. What would it be? I would say Call of Duty 4 would be a great one. Now, of course, Modern Warfare 2 would be an easier answer, because more people probably play that. But I would love to see a Call of Duty 4 remake you know it's just it's such a fantastic game that a lot, not a lot of people got to play and the people that do go out there and they spend the 20 dollars wherever it costs to buy call of duty 4 just to experience it and try and get an idea of what it was like when that game was in its prime they're faced with hackers and empty lobbies and it's kind of a ghost town and it sucks if that's the case it was a great game it was really a great game that i wish a lot more people could play next question he writes Dear Nero, what is your views on Nintendo's policies regarding emulation? Sincerely, David from North Carolina. So David, let me tell you about a backward-ass company called Nintendo that don't know what's going on throughout the real world. So basically, one, Nintendo is trying to take money from... At first, they're like, okay, we're going to steal all the money from the Let's Players on YouTube and make it so it all goes to us because we're so poor because our consoles are awful, right? So they did that first. And then they're like, okay, okay, everyone's starting to hate us and our sales are starting to go down. So now, let's just make it so they can post wherever they want on YouTube again. And then after that, they're like, oh boy, let's go ahead and take a percentage and make this new Nintendo tax and take money from the Let's Players because, once again, our consoles aren't selling very well and therefore we need money. So they're doing that again. That that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Behind all that, deep down in the iceberg, they have these policies regarding emulation that you talked about in your question, where basically it is illegal and immoral, according to Nintendo, to emulate games. Now, if you know what emulation is, um, let's say, for example, you see like a Pokemon Red Let's Play, right? Pokemon Red's a very old game. Of course, I don't think there's any way to take a Game Boy Color and hook it up to be recorded. There might be, but you know, it'd be pretty tough. So what people do, they've actually made it, so they've remade these games and put them on the computer. They're emulated on the computer, and they play and look and function exactly like they did on the Game Boy, except they're now on your computer, because you, you, don't, you don't have a Game Boy anymore. <laughs> you know, you don't have your Pokemon Ray anymore, and the game is so old. Nintendo doesn't like when people emulate games like that, even though... Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Silver, Pokemon Gold, all the old Pokemon games. I'm using these as an example because these are the only Nintendo games I've played. Even though all of those games are so old that they're not even for sale. They don't even sell these games anymore. They don't sell Game Boys. They don't sell Game Boy Colors. They don't sell Game Boy Advances. They don't sell any of these Pokemon games. It is impossible to buy these things from Nintendo. You have to go find someone on like eBay or something if it's even possible to find that kind of stuff anymore. You have to go do that instead. And yet they still bitch about emulation. It's like, it is literally impossible. Literally impossible for me to play this game without emulation. And yet they still complain about it. Just because they're Nintendo, they're a bunch of old Japanese people sitting up in their ivory tower. They just have no idea what's happening 
in the real world. Nintendo of America, on the other hand, they're not too bad. They kind of understand what's going on, but the Japanese version of Nintendo, like the people calling the shots from over there, they have no idea what's happening in the real world. They have no idea how the world works, and it, they're just so backwards. Nintendo as a company, not so happy with Nintendo as a company. Bad stuff over there. Next and final question he's going to write. Dear Nero, I was wondering what your view is on the Golden Knife and the Golden PW and Call of Duty Ghost. Keep up the great work, Josh from the UK. So Josh, this was pointed out to me on Twitter not too long ago that uh, I made a video, right? We were talking about the Ripper, right? We were talking about the Ripper DLC and the entire idea of pay to win in Call of Duty. And how if they were to make a gun that's only available to people that bought the gun via DLC that was ridiculously better than everyone else, then that would just be bad, right? If that gun was just so ridiculous... And the only way to get it was to pay money. How awful of an idea that would be. And I also made the point in that video. I was like, you know what? It'd be a lot better if there was also a different way to be able to unlock this gun. You know, the Ripper's a really fun gun. But not a lot of people want to buy the entire DLC. The, for me personally, I gave a really negative review to the entire Devastation DLC. Because I thought the maps were just awful. And But the Ripper was good. And a lot of people were asking me, like, should I buy the Ripper? Because I want that Ripper gun really bad. The maps don't look that great, but I want to pay. I want. I want the Ripper. Do I should I pay 15 bucks essentially for the Ripper? And that got me thinking. It's like you know, it'd be really nice if somehow you could unlock that DLC gun for doing something. Get put some kind of challenge out there. You know, make it so you have to hit fifth prestige. You have to hit tenth prestige. You have to go and get, you know, a 200 headshots with assault rifles, or you have to go get, make some. Make it hard, of course, like really hard. But make it possible for people to earn DLC guns within Ghost without paying money for DLC, right? That, that, that was the whole point of what I was saying. And then, like, not too long after that, they're like, hey, if you are 5th Prestige, have this golden knife. And if you're 10th Prestige, have this golden PDW. And it's like, that's awesome! They, they probably didn't see my video. I'm not even going to try and take credit for it. But it's kind of a funny coincidence that, you know, I kind of made that whole video and talked about all that. And then, you know, a week, week or two weeks later, they're like, here... Just for actually making it to a certain rank, you get certain stuff. And it's like, that's awesome! Call of Duty needs that! That'd be awesome! You know, there needs to be rewards. There needs to be stuff to end game. Here's something I was thinking about. There needs to be more end game in Call of Duty. I was thinking about Black Ops, the original Black Ops the other day. And I realize this fear near is going on forever, but... Uh, I was thinking about the original Black Ops. You couldn't get gold camo in that game without hitting 14th Prestige. You had to hit 14th Prestige first to be able to unlock gold camos for your guns. And in that game, there was a COD point system, and the COD points were used uh, to purchase different camos, purchase attachments, purchase kill streaks, purchase everything. You need these COD points to be able to buy or unlock really anything. You, know, you can unlock it, but then you had to unlock it again with COD points. And so that game had a ton of end game because once you got the max rank, you got the 14th prestige, you got the 15th prestige, you're now doing contracts, you're doing challenges, you're doing wager matches, and you're doing what you can to earn COD points to unlock different kinds of camos, you're doing it to unlock different kinds of kill streaks. There was a really grindy almost, but still fun, uh, progressional based system that they had going on there. And it was great. And I would love for them to do that. And I would love for Call of Duty in, fu in future titles to give us more rewards for making it to certain ranks. You know, here, you get this reward, you make it to 15th Prestige. You get this reward for 10th, this reward for 5th Prestige. That'd be great if they were to do all that in future Call of Duties. And I like what Ghost did by adding the Golden Knife and the Golden PW. And I'd like to see them add more. Add more, quite frankly. That'd be pretty nice. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And if you guys like to send in your guys' questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. Make the title of the message Dear Nero. And next week, at the end of the week, next Wednesday, next Wednesday morning, in fact, I will go through all those questions. I will read them all. And the ones that I haven't answered before, the ones I feel were good questions, I will copy and paste them in this here text document. And there we go. I read them off and I answer them. And that's how Dear Nero works in a nutshell. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating. Hope you guys all... Have a wonderful day.